All right, Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel, which is us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We make up the biblical 12 tribe to the nation of Israel. This is the brother Abadia from the GMS Houston camp, and I have a quick lesson, Lord willing. Uh, that I want to go into, and uh, you know, I pray that it be edifying. You know, there's a difference in the nation of Israel. Okay, you have the remnant, which is the uh, the elect that's going <clears throat> that's going to be delivered here in these last days, and then you have the rest of Israel, and that remnant that's going to be delivered. You know, those are going to be the ones that repent. Those are going to be the ones that feel sorry have that sorrowful uh, spirit for going off against the Most High. In other words, breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. You know, um, the laws we've broken in the past, and then, you know, when we go off in this uh, time, you know, we feel like shit versus the rest of Israel, two-thirds. They take pleasure in wickedness, you know, you know, a Jacob go out and commit adultery, okay, and won't feel one way or the other about it, okay. So, I have some scriptures I want to go into. I'm gonna uh, go into certain scriptures and then other scriptures I'll I'll just quote for the sake of time, or I'll be bringing out you know all kind of scriptures, but I don't want to make this video too long. So let's get into this. Uh, first scripture, this is Amos, the ninth chapter, and I'm going to bring out the, uh, the eighth verse. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God, which is Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom. Now, the eyes of the Most High in this scripture is talking about the angels and the sinful kingdom. Uh, it's talking about America, okay? We can apply this scripture to talking about America because... Um, this is a sinful kingdom. Now, what is sin? Let's get it. You know, these are uh, basic scriptures. First John three and four. It says, um, "Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law." Okay. So going back to, uh oh, let me just do this. Going back to Amos nine and eight. I'm going to read it. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. Okay, because this kingdom is is uh, comprised of going against the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. You know, that energy is actually perpetuated. It's pushed to go directly against the laws that's written in the scriptures. And Esau, you know, uh, who's in power, who controls the narrative of everything, all right? He knows the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? What I mean by that is he have the scriptures. He know uh, uh, what's up in the, in the scriptures at the, at the top, you know? They know, yet um, they push out wickedness because that's their job in the earth, all right? And that's why the Most High is going to destroy this place. Now, in the book of, and I'll get it real quick, Isaiah, the 13th chapter, in the uh, 15th verse, it says this, Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Okay, and this chapter is going into the destruction. Well, let's, if we read the ver uh, first verse, it says, The burden of Babylon, uh, which Isaiah the son, son of Amos did see. Okay, so this uh, chapter is talking about Babylon, all right, and it's not talking about the ancient Babylonian kingdom, it's talking about um, America, all right, and it says, everyone that is found shall be thrust through, meaning shall be killed, everyone that is found, what, uh, uh, in league, or in other words, like the scriptures say, that has, uh, that is worshiping the beast, okay, 
because America is pretty much the uh, the head of the beast, right? It tells us in Revelation the seventeenth chapter that that uh that woman, okay, that wrote the scarlet colored uh beast, okay, meaning that woman being America, okay, Babylon the Great, because it say that she had a cup in her hand and it was full of uh uh blasphemy and, uh, and abominations. I'm roughly uh, paraphrasing. Okay, and she's riding symbolically riding the uh, beast that has seven heads and ten horns or that have seven heads and ten horns, meaning she controls the direction of the beast. Okay. And um, everyone that is found uh, worshiping the beast that believes in this place takes pleasure, which majority uh, two thirds of our people do. They're going to be uh, thrust through, meaning killed. Like you take a sword and you thrust it through somebody, okay? You kill them. And that's what it's talking about. It says, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword, okay? And you have majority of our people that are joined unto this place, all right? They have no problem with the wickedness that goes on in this place. Take the so-called black woman for an example. She... Uh, is the main one that is for homosexuality. They're friends with homosexuals. They're let, you know, I'll just say that, you know. Then you even have, you know, the men, the, our men, are, you have uh, a lot of our men, well, the men that are, um, that don't have nothing to say against it. They may say, uh, well, I'm not gay, but as long as they don't come and meet with it, then... That's their business, okay? You either got to be for it or against it. It ain't no in-between, you know? Now I want to go back to um, Amos, Amos 9 and 8, and read it again. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, okay? We're applying this to America. It says, because what? This is a, a, a kingdom, okay, that transgress that that uh pushes and promotes to transgress or to break the laws of the most high because that's what sin is as we read in first john three and four and i will destroy it from off the face of the earth saving that i will not utterly destroy the house of jacob said the lord right because the most high is not gonna uh destroy the whole house of uh, jacob he's gonna deliver a uh a remnant Or in other words, uh, the elect, the elect of the nation of uh, of uh, Israel, then, you know, they're not going to be destroyed. And there's a different spirit, but, you know, between the two amongst the nation of Israel, you have the ones that that are going to come back to the heavenly father. And the most High set all this up. You know, this is not something that um, we're doing on our by our own might and power. The Most High set up uh, who's the elect, and he set up who's going to be the wicked amongst um, the nation of Israel, okay? And those two have different spirits. You know, one is going to have a particular spirit. The other is going to actually uh, be down for wickedness. And I want to go through a few scriptures to show that, you know, uh, that difference, you know? And they're, they're the ones holding up progress on the kingdom coming. Because if all Israel were to, you know, come back to the Most High, call upon his name, then the Most High would deliver us. Right? Now, let's get this in uh, the book of Psalms 34. And I'll read, uh, I think, 17 and uh, 18 is the, you know, the uh, key verse. It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord, Yahweh, hear it and deliver them out of their troubles. Because, you know, we're in a time of uh, Jacob's trouble. Now, the Most High is going to hear the prayers of the elect. And you're also going to have our people out here praying. Uh, for the most part, uh, our people are going to be praying in the name of Jesus. They're going to be calling on our law. They're going to be calling on these different Gods. Then you have some Israelites that know the name. They're gonna call on the Most High. 
but they don't have the right spirit. Meaning they know that they Israelites, they may know the name of the most high, but they really all about this kingdom. They into this place. Okay. To some degree, you know, they've cut off being wicked, but they still indulge and take pleasure in wickedness too. Okay. It says, um, now check out the 18th verse. It said, the Lord, the Lord is nigh or near, okay, unto them that are of a broken heart. Why should we have a broken heart? Meaning a, a mind that is in a, matter of fact, let's look up that. Well, I, I'm not on the blue letter, so that's okay. But what it's saying is, you know, the ones that have the mind that are, that are in a uh, sorrowful mind because the word repent. You know, in order to repent, that's a, uh, it's really an action word, which expresses being sorry for something that we've done wrong, okay? Because the word repent means back or again, and that's re, and then pent goes back to the word penitent, which means to humble or to be sorry, to be humble or sorry, okay? And that's what this is talking about right here in Psalm 34 and 18. The Lord is not the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. The ones that are in a sorrowful spirit for the wickedness that we've committed, you know, as a nation and on and on an individual basis, the things we've all done, you know. It says, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. You see? So the most high is uh, uh, going to deliver the elect, and the elect is going to have that spirit, the spirit of being sorry, the spirit of a, uh, a contrite uh, spirit. And let's do this real quick to get a loose definition, uh, if I can get it. Okay, I was trying to uh, pull up contrite. I'm having trouble with it. All right, I'll just do this. I'll come back there and go to uh, go to the Google real quick, and we'll do this contrite. Mm -hmm. It won't let me do it like that. So this is, uh, and you can go deeper into the word uh, on the etymology online dictionary, but this is a. Uh, a loose definition from the Google. It says uh, feeling or expressing remorse or penitence. See? Affected by guilt. Check that out. So we go back to the scripture. It's, it's uh, saying that the most high. Uh, well, I read it from the top. The righteous cry and the Lord, the, and the Lord hear it and delivered them out of their troubles. It says, uh, the Lord is not the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. We went into that word contrite. Okay? The one that feel remorse, you know, for some for, for wrongdoing. All right? Being of a uh, that expresses penitence, which is what? Uh sorrow, being sorry for something or humble. All right? Even when we go off, we go off here and there because we're in the flesh. You know, we feel like shit when we do it. For the ones of us that are sincere about this truth, you know, it affects us when we go off. It fucks with our mind, you know. Versus the rest of Israel, they don't have a problem with it. The scriptures back back that up. And let's pull. I got a few scriptures I want to pull to uh, to express it. We'll first go to uh, 2 Thessalonians. And let's check it out. 2 Thessalonians 2. And I'll go straight to the uh, the verse. But this whole chapter is a good chapter, as we know, to read. But I just want to get this one verse. It says, and this verse is pertaining to the Israelites. Well, you know what I'll do? Start at verse 10. And it says this, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness to them uh, that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, which they might uh, that they might be saved. So, when, you know, as we go out and we teach, we 
on the highways and byways, we put up these lessons. We know majority of our people are uh, not going to believe uh, in the truth. Okay. They believe in this place. They don't believe in the truth of the scriptures. And it says, uh, because they, uh, I mean, because they receive not the love of the truth, because it's a labor of love when we go out and push the truth. Right? That they might be saved, because we know by this word, by repenting, getting in order with the Most High, ultimately we have to be of the elect, but the elect is going to display those actions that's going to repent, that's going to uh, have a love for the truth. Okay? Those are the ones that know that they have to do these things to uh, be saved versus the rest of Israel, the majority, they don't give a shit. So let's read on. It says, and for this cause, the most high shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. But let's check that out. The most, like I said earlier, according to the scriptures, this is one of them. The most high set it all up. The most high set up that division in Israel to where some are going to remain indulging and, and have pleasure in wickedness. Others, the others, that's which is a smaller number, okay, they're going to uh, they're going to have that spirit of sorrow for the wickedness that that we've done. You know, of they they've done, which you know we all a part of it because the scriptures uh, say through the well one scripture through the mouth of Paul that the scripture have concluded concluded. That we all under sin. We all have sinned and come short of the glory. You see? So reading on, verse 12, this is the key verse. It says that they might, I'm sorry, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Okay? Check that out. There's going to be the remnant, the elect that's going to believe the truth. It's going to be the rest that don't believe the truth. That elect is going to have a spirit of sorrow for the wrongdoing that we've done. The rest are not. Let's read on. It says, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is the same as sin. The way that we righteous is by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. The way that we are unrighteous is by breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. So right here, it's saying that had, they had pleasure. The ones that love not the truth have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now let's go to the book of... Uh, Maccabees first was if you have first Maccabees one and we're gonna start at verse eleven. All right, uh first Maccabees one and eleven. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them. We have had much sorrow. So this device. Now let's read it again before I go to the 12th verse. In those days went out of Israel. Wicked men. Who persuaded many. So the ones that was persuaded by the wicked men. They're, uh, they're wicked too. Saying let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. And if you make a covenant with the heathen, that means you're going to follow their ways. Okay? As we read, well, we'll read a little bit. It'll, it'll show that. That's what that's talking about. It says, uh, they make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. For this device pleased them well. So they, they took, you know, it's talking about the really the leaders, even the ones that followed the uh the words of the wicked you know of israel to go get in bed uh with the wicked with the wicked at this time is the same wicked that's ruling here in these last days it's esau because this is going into the greeks okay in particular during the time where antiochus epiphanes was uh in power all right now reading on it says then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. That's going into what we read in the uh, 11th verse talking about, you know, there was uh, in those days that went out of Israel, wicked men who persuaded many saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. 
the covenant was to follow after the uh the ordinance of the heathens and then they would get perks and benefits for doing so all right and uh that's it on that but right here it says that to go and make that covenant with the wicked right and to to do after their ordinances their way it pleased them it says that right here in verse 12 so this device pleased them well now let's get another scripture on that in the book of romans talking about our people that take pleasure in wickedness then they do like i mentioned earlier as a prime example if you listen to this mainstream music these rappers right they glorify uh committing adultery they glorify it um and not only that they talk about nothing but wickedness then when you look at the actions of our people you know um they you can see this you can you can just see it on them jake don't give a shit about you know uh discipline according to what we out there saying because the word is out man the word then went out uh uh that the so-called negroes latinos and native americans we the israelites and we got to come back to the most high and uh serve him you know we got to practice his law statutes and commandments to the best of our ability right and you know our people ain't 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 with that that's gonna cut out all the fun that they have and all the pleasure that they have in this wicked kingdom. All right. Now, uh, you know, right here in the book of Romans, the first chapter, this is referring to the Israelites in, uh, in Rome, you know, they knew that they were Israelites. Now check this out. It says, um, I'll start at verse 29. It says being filled with all unrighteousness. See, this is the, the spirit that's really on the two thirds of our people. Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, maliciousness, uh, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, uh, malignity, uh, whispers, backbiters, haters of the most high, the, the, the spiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, uh, without natural affection. You know, um, Jake's, now they walk past each other. They mean mugging, looking at grilling them. You know, you, you you look at them the wrong way, you might get killed. Or get in a fight, altercation. Where we're supposed to have natural uh, affection for one another. You know, but this all go back to us being up under the curses. It's, the only difference is in the last day, well... In the last days, the elect are going to repent, you know, and that process has been happening for years, decades, you know, repent for the wrong that they've done. And uh, in other words, feel sorry and try to get in the good graces of the most high to the best of their ability, praying that they will have the hope for elect. All right. Uh, it says M. Plax, how do you pronounce this word? Implacable, unmerciful. Okay, I believe, you know, that nigga uh, Rick Ross, he had a song. Is it, Maybe it was an album or a song, I'm, I'm not for sure, but I remember he said, uh, God forgives, but I don't. And that's the spirit of Jake. You know, Jake will hold a grudge against his brother, won't forgive him uh, and, and until his dying day. But we all need mercy, you know. Now, let's go to this last verse, and I'll end it right here. Um, it says, who knowing the judgment of the Most High. Now, our people don't know the judgment of the Most High. But back then, you know, you know, the ones of the circumcision, the ones that knew that they were Israelites, they knew by being going off from the law, statutes, and commandments that there was a punishment for it, okay? It says, who knowing the uh, judgment of the Most High now, I, I, did, I said now our people don't know, but they do know because we telling our people uh, how to get right and where they going wrong at, okay? You can get on the YouTube any time of the day, any time of the night and watch a video, okay? 
So they do know the judgment of the Most High because we bringing out the judgments of the Most High. So I got this. I stand. I had to correct myself. You know, our people know the judgments of the Most High. We bringing out, telling our people, don't take the mark of the beast. Okay, that's that that you we read about in Revelation 13, starting at 16, 16 to 17. That's which is the RFID microchip. We tell them if you take that, you know, yeah, you may get some perks and benefits, some goodies. You know, from Esau, but the Most High is going to destroy you. And really, it's not no perks and benefits. You're going to be able to eat. You're going to be able to buy and sell with that chip. But in the end, the Most High is going to destroy you. The ones that take that chip. So we're telling our people the judgments. You know, we're telling them what's wrong from what's, uh, what's wrong from what's, what's right from wrong. Okay? All right, it says, who knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things are worthy of debt. And we tell them that, look, if you don't, we tell our people, if you don't get right and come come uh, uh, back to the Most High, and we showing them through the teachings how to get yourself right, okay, um, that you're going to be put to death. And that's the truth. The Most High is going to put our people to death, the ones that don't. That are not of the elect. The elect are going to be the ones that have that sorrowful spirit. That get in order with the most high. Through his son. It says not only do the same. But have pleasure in them that do them. See. Going into that pleasure. How our people. The majority of them take pleasure in wickedness. You see. They take pleasure in doing. Um unrighteousness and there's a penalty to pay for that least you repent but we know the whole nation ain't gonna repent man we only concerned with the elect all right and i see why man you know all this shit popping off our people in here uh right now with this covid19 um pop uh prophecies just springing off the pages we bringing out all this information okay and you think our people give a damn? Say, you know what? Man, I better get right because shit is getting hot out here. No, our people continuing on, hoping and praying for this place to open back up, which it's open back up to a degree uh, so that they can get back into their pleasures of wickedness. You know, so Lord willing, I hope this lesson was uh, edifying and exhorting on to the spirit. I'm going to end it right there. Um once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit. And peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom.